Photosynthesis is the process by which plants make energy from the use of chlorophyll and light. It is the process that oxidizes water to produce dioxygen and sustains all life on Earth. It sustains all life through the food chain. Light from the sun initiates photosynthesis in plants, which is turned into energy. This light energy is then absorbed by the plant in its chloroplasts. Inside the chloroplasts, there are stroma, thylakoid, and granum. The stroma is the aqueous fluid that holds the different parts together. The thylakoid contains photosystem 1 and 2, which are key molecules to the function of the photosynthesis chain. The granum is stacks of thylakoids. Photosystem 2 is the main focus here. It is embedded in the membrane of the thylakoid. The top part of photosystem 2 is exposed to the stroma, and the bottom part is in the lumen. The lumen represents the area inside the thylakoid membrane. Here is the photosynthesis chain, or more specifically known as the photosynthetic electron transport chain. The first step takes place in photosystem 2. The photons from light are captured through antennas, and electrons are then extracted from water molecules. The water molecules are broken into oxygen gas and hydrogen ions through the oxygen evolving center, seen here. The electrons are used to pump the hydrogen ions across the membrane and are transferred through the electron transport chain to photosystem 1. The final fate of the hydrogen ions is to power up ATP synthesis and the final fate of electrons is to be placed in the carrier molecule, NADPH. This is the structure of photosystem 2. As you can tell, it is a very complex molecule with many parts. I will focus directly on the oxygen evolving center of photosystem 2. This is where water is oxidized to oxygen by the oxidative power of manganese. The oxygen evolving center, also known as the OEC, is seen here. It is a cube-like shape containing four manganese ions and one calcium ion. The purple corners represent the manganese ions and the green corners represent the calcium ion. The red corners represent the oxygen atoms that are present in the OEC. In the OEC, manganese has four oxidation states, and they are plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, and plus 5. This is important for the function of the oxygen evolving center. Currently, the manganese 1 is enlarged. The coordination around manganese 1 is 6, which indicates that it is an octahedral geometry. The ligands include aspartic acid, three oxygen that are part of the cube, and two waters that are not shown. Shown here is manganese 2. It also has an octahedral geometry. It has a glutamic acid as a ligand, a histidine, three oxygens, and a possible water counting to six ligands. Now we are looking at the manganese 3 ion. It is still part of the cube and contains glutamic acid as a ligand, which is two coordinated as you can see. There are also three oxygens coordinated, which are part of the cube, and there is also a possible water present. This gives manganese 3 an octahedral geometry. Present here is the manganese 4 ion, and it is different from the other manganese ions because it is not present in the cube structure. There is a glutamic acid and an aspartic acid acting as two direct ligand proteins. Here you can see the water molecules present on manganese 4. One of them might possibly be a hydroxide ion. They are slightly faded out to represent how they are present but not always seen. Manganese 4 has six coordinating ligands, giving it an octahedral geometry, just like the other manganese ions. The last metal ion present is calcium, seen in the green corner, and its function is not known. There are six coordination bonds here. The calcium has bicarbonate as a ligand and a carbonyl of an alanine as another ligand. The other ligands of calcium are water or hydroxide ions. There is a hydroxide ligand in a bridging position between manganese 4 and calcium. The ligand field stabilization energy, or LFSC, splitting diagrams and calculations for the five metals in the OEC can be seen here. The more negative the value for the LFSC, the more stable it is. Therefore, manganese 4 plus is the most stable because it has an LFSC value of negative 1.2. Manganese 2 plus and calcium 2 plus both have an LFSC value of 0, so they are the least stable. However, they are the most labile, meaning they are very fast to react. Overall, if there are more electrons in the antibonding, e.g. orbitals, then the metal is more labile. Manganese 3 plus has an LFSC value of negative 0.6, and manganese 5 plus has an LFSC value of negative 0.8. These two oxidation states are relatively stable and not very labile. The plus 2 to the plus 5 range of oxidation states for manganese is an advantage for its role in water oxidation of photosystem 2. How this exactly happens is through the photocatalytic process.
process is depicted here and will be described in simplistic terms. The OEC is oxidized in a series of oxidation steps. At the same time, the chlorophyll complex P680 gets excited from light. There are five states that have been observed spectroscopically, and they are S0, S1, S2, S3, and S4. Four photons must be absorbed in order to excite the chlorophyll complex. The MN42OX group is unaltered throughout the cycle, so it is not shown besides in the S0 state. From the S0 state to the S1 state, there is a redox reaction taking place, and the manganese 2 plus is oxidized to manganese 3 plus. The electron then goes to P680, or the, known as the chlorophyll complex. From the S1 state to the S2 state, there is another redox reaction taking place. Manganese 3 plus is oxidized to manganese 4 plus, and the electron gets lost to P680. From the S2 state to the S3 state, there is another redox reaction taking place, but the electron is transferred through a tyrosine radical. The tyrosine is present to help transfer the electrons from the oxygen evolving center to P680. It acts almost as a bridge, making the two dependent on each other. From the S3 state to the S4 state, there is ligand dissociation with an unknown base. Finally, from the S4 state to the S0 state, there is a ligand exchange present where the oxygen is released. This whole process happens at almost the speed of light. The final result is that it produces a dioxygen and a hydrogen ion. As mentioned, there lies a special pair of chlorophyll molecules known as P680 at the center of photosystem 2 along with the oxygen evolving spinner. The special pair of chlorophyll molecules are chlorophyll A and B and they make up the P680 complex. The reduction potential of P680 is very high, around 1.2 to 1.4 volts. This is required of the water splitting reaction in the OEC for oxidizing water into O2 and H+. The reduction potential of the dioxygen is 0.815 volts. Since this reduction potential is less than the reduction potential of P680, the four electrons from the OEC are easily transferred to P680. In the diagram showed, Z represents the OEC along with a tyrosine residue. The electrons spontaneously flow to P680 because of the Z having a lower reduction potential than the P680. The four electrons in the P680 get excited from a photon of light and then are promoted to a higher energy level. The electrons then flow through QA, PQ, and C, which are all part of the electron transport chain. Finally, the electrons go to photosystem 1 and the process of photosynthesis continues. Studying photosystem 2 is of particular interest right now for engineers developing photovoltaic solar panels to harvest light energy and use it as a renewable resource. Photosystem 2 has the most efficient light transformative capability on Earth. If engineers and scientists could break down water splitting the molecule and apply it to cell potential of photovoltaic cells, then solar panels could have the possibility of reaching nearer to 100% efficiency.